Warning, concentrated sulfuric acid is highly corrosive, toxic and damaging to the environment. When handling, wear protective clothing at all times. Hello, and in this video we are going to be looking at the dehydrating properties of sulfuric acid. In this experiment I'll be using approximately 20 ml of concentrated 80 ml of sulfuric acid and about 2 tablespoons of sucrose, that's normal sugar. I will first show the experiment and then explain the reaction mechanism taking place. You will need protective clothing, rubber or polyvinyl chloride gloves, sucrose, a glass beaker, 80 ml of sulfuric acid, glass pipette and sodium hydrogen carbonate or any other base. The base will be used to neutralise the products at the end of the reaction so we can dispose of them safely and to neutralise any acid spills. Carefully add the sulfuric acid to the sugar and watch for the reaction take place. As you can see a black solid is formed and seemingly grows out the beaker. I used very little sugar and acid, thus the snake that grew from the beaker was very small as I didn't want to create too much of a mess. The sucrose, that's C12H22O11, reacts with the sulfuric acid, the catalyst in the reaction, to produce carbon and water. The reaction is extremely exothermic as you can see the water evaporating from the beaker. Due to the high temperatures, some of the sulfuric acid may have evaporated producing a toxic gas, SO2. Carbon monoxide and dioxide were also produced due to the oxidising properties of the sulfuric acid, which oxidised the carbon. When the reaction was complete, I made a solution of sodium hydrogen carbonate and washed my pipette and the reaction beaker in order to neutralise leftover acid from the demonstration. So we know that sucrose is broken down into carbon and water when in contact with sulfuric acid. The molecule of sucrose can be seen below the overall reaction equation. We can assume that sulfuric acid breaks the bonds between the hydroxy functional groups and the nearby hydrogens to produce water, leaving the carbon behind. I drew out the reaction mechanism for a section of the sucrose molecule. Firstly, the acid, being an acid, donates a proton to the hydroxy group on the sucrose molecule. Note that curly arrow show the movement of electrons. This creates an OH2 plus leaving group on the carbon, which, as you can tell by its name, leaves a carbon in the sucrose structure, forming a water molecule and leaving a positive charge on the carbon. This carbon then steals the hydrogen off another nearby carbon, which is subsequently stolen by the water molecule, forming a hydronium ion, that's H3O plus. A double bond is formed on the two carbons with the plus charge and the hydronium reacts with HSO4- ion at the start of the reaction to produce water and sulfuric acid. As you can see the catalyst in the reaction at the start has been regenerated at the end. This explains why we have to neutralise the reaction flask after the reaction has finished as it still contains sulfuric acid. This mechanism would apply to all the OH and O groups on the carbon until only carbon and water was left from the original sucrose molecule.